Oh, hey, Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. Macro fillets in olive oil, anyone? Uh, you know, one of my favorite passages that I want to talk about today is a combination of two passages found in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew 5, verse 6 is a passage that many will be familiar with. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they'll be satisfied. And then in Matthew 12, 1, same gospel, Matthew talks about how Jesus and his apostles or disciples were out walking in a field uh, on the Sabbath and they were hungry, he says. So they took grain and plucked it. Hunger is a great word in Matthew. In fact, Matthew, who has one out of the dozens of books in the New Testament, uses the word hunger more than one third of the time in the whole New Testament. He was a foodie. And I like that about Matthew because we Lanier's, we're foodies too. I remember the first time that uh, Rebecca, uh, one of our daughters and I got to meet the marvelous young woman who would become our daughter-in-law. She and our son were dating, they were at Oxford, and we went over there to do some different things and got to see them, and we had dinner, it was that first meeting, at Jamie's Italian restaurant there in Oxford. I think it's closed down now, Lament, Cry, it was really good. Um, so we were eating and I was ordering, and as I tend to do at a restaurant, I may have been ordering in abundance. And uh, Rebecca looked at Nora and said, did you ever read Gary Chapman's book on the five love languages? And Nora was familiar with the book, but didn't remember it. I think the, the idea behind the book is there are five different ways that most people show their love. Uh, physical touch or quality time or acts of service or words of affirmation or some fifth one I can't ever remember. But Rebecca said, we're convinced he got it wrong, that there are six love languages because he left out the linear love language, food. And I think she was right. I love food. I love to eat it. I love to smell it. I love to prepare it. I love to serve it. I love every aspect of food. And if you think about hunger and food, you're thinking about a subject that's huge. I mean, it's a subject we deal with every day. Every day of our lives, we are hungry and we try to figure out how to eat. Hunger can drive us to do things we'd never do otherwise. Hunger can, can cause us to be angry. <laughs> Hangry, I think is the word. Hunger can cause us to smile, be motivated. Hunger is a massive emotional comfort. Hunger is a massive, uh, 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 so many aspects of our lives. And so Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger for righteousness. Now here's what this has got me thinking this morning as I'm sticking my head in the fridge trying to figure out what I'm about to eat. Today, am I going to hunger after righteousness? And I'm gonna make decisions that are the right decisions to make. Righteousness is a loaded term in the Bible. It talks about holiness in your lifestyle, living rightly, but it also talks about, it can be a judicial word of a, of a declaration of righteousness by God. And the Bible uses it in both senses. And, and today I've got some choices. I can be driven by a hunger for righteousness. And if I am, I have the assurance, the promise of a never lying Jesus, the promise that I'll be satisfied, that God will help make my life what it should be. I've also got a chance to hunger for righteousness before God, that, that declaration of not guilty for these sins that I carry around like dead weight and I have the assurance that God will give me that forgiveness through the cross. So what a great idea. I'm eating today, 
but I really want a hunger for righteousness. By the way, special shout out to my young friend who's been singing in Vienna as he hungers for using his talents for the Lord. Just want to say hello. That's your video thought for the day.